Welcome to Array Tools version 2 overview. For those of you new to this product, Array Tools is a series of tools that you can store in your asset browser that is a geometry nodes based, gizmo based way of arraying different meshes. So a general note about consistency is that the yellow gizmos are always going to be a primary function, the light blue gizmos are going to be a secondary function, and the dark blue gizmos are going to be a toggle option. So in the case of this single axis tool here, we can drag this in and out to change the length, can change the spacing, and we can use this to toggle between the count mode and the length mode. We've also got a toggle here where we can drag it up to toggle between different axis directions, and that's the single axis tool. The multi-axis tool has the same functionality, but the difference is the toggle will toggle between two axes or multiple axes at once. So we've got X and Y, X and Z, Y and Z, and X, Y and Z all together. Same functionality. I should point out as well that we can also eyedrop a custom object and it will automatically change to that object. We can also have the scale and rotation influence the array. I can also select a collection. So we can use the collection itself or we can hit collection randomize. Let's move on to the next tool, grid. Grid is similar to the line, same functionalities. So we've got a slider here for the distance. We've still got our toggle options for count and length, exact same tools on here. And our toggle, we've got a green dial. Green signifies some kind of global adjustment. So we're adjusting the global scale here and we can toggle on the 3D grid to get these kind of arrays and same level of functionality in this axis as well. So lots of control, lots of intuitive gizmos and lots of menus that you don't have to mess around with. The next array tool here is step grid. So it's like the 2D grid, uh, but instead of arraying a 3D grid like this one, it's going to array a step grid, fairly self-explanatory, same level of functionality and a global scale multiplier. Our last simple array tool here is what I'm calling a multi-tool. And basically it's arraying a line between the object origin. And if we go into edit mode, I've just got this single mesh here and I can just hit G. And the beauty of this is I can hit G and drag it around anywhere I want. Same functionality as before. And my toggle can toggle between this kind of mode where I introduce one axis or I can introduce two axis. So it's really kind of a combination of all of these tools together. Uh, it just depends what you want to use and what you prefer to use the most, but I quite like this for its speed. So I can toggle this onto one and a single axis. Uh, so what I also quite like about this is the ability to, let's say, go into object mode. I'm going to hit control period and control period enters the mode where I can now hit G and when I drag things around, you can see the location's changing. If I hit S, you can see the scale is changing. So now that I have that mode enabled, I can drag this end around. I go into edit mode, I drag the other end around, and it makes it really fast and intuitive uh, to edit the start and finish points. So a really fun tool, really easy to use uh, for those that prefer using the G tools. And all of this, I'm just editing in my viewport. I don't have to go into any of these options here. Really nice. Next up, We've got the array tools and same logic here. Yellow for primary. We've got yellow for adjusting the spacing. We've got a toggle for count and length. And then we toggle up once. We have a multi array or a two times radial where we can change the count and then the spacing with these two secondary controls. Finally, if we toggle up one more, we introduce a stepped array, which gives us this vertical axis to play with as well. So again, we can still choose a collection and either instance the whole collection or randomize the collection. So quite fun. On to the next tool. Two curve based array tools. The first one here is curve array. Uh, you can drag this in. I'll save this out as an asset and by default it'll just be arraying these cubes here but you can select a custom object and have that show up. It does influence with rotation and scale. So if you've selected something that's the wrong orientation, you can just align it correctly. It should be good to go. We've also got some controls here for spacing. Uh, we can influence the bevel and we can toggle between cyclic and non-cyclic. And lastly, we have a curve scatter tool here. And I think in the next update, I'd like to introduce a few more scatter tools, but curve scatter is definitely my favorite. So what we have here is if I go into draw mode in edit mode and surface, I can draw a curve on any kind of surface. 
and let's choose a collection we do the whole thing or randomize sometimes we've got some stray curves that are floating above the object here we can just hit raycast and select the object we want to raycast and we're good to go so our controls here are spacing our primary control here is translation we've got introducing randomness or not so it toggles it on and off and also tweaks it and this one here is for random scale so something like this really good for drawing on some kind of object and also these tools don't forget can be used in edit mode i'm still in edit mode here so the nice thing about both of these this tool and this tool is that if i go into edit mode and select some verts and hit alt s the handle scale value is going to influence the instance scale so you can see this is a really nice option for things like foliage just drawing it on it saves a lot of hassle with uh, setup and also messing around in weight painting, especially on geometry where you might not have the right kind of resolution or the kinds of things that you want. And again, Raycast means that I can make some edits to this and it will update. The Raycast tool does raise the points quite a bit higher than the mesh before it casts its ray down. As you can see here, I'll have to scale this up pretty far before it starts not working. Uh, but if ever you run into a problem where stuff is not hitting the mesh anymore, you can just drag it up and it should work just fine. So the setup I have here automatically compensates for the placement of the collection. So if I move this whole collection around, I never really have to worry about the instances moving around as well. It can be a little bit finicky depending on where it's placed, but generally speaking, as long as it's on a certain side of the array itself, it should work. But if you do find that it doesn't work, that's what the collection pivot geometry nodes group is for. So if I have an object in this collection and I want to treat that object as the pivot, I can just hit F3 and search for pivot and assign it collection pivot. And now it will automatically use that as the origin. And it's still going to be relative to the collection itself. So I can still move this around. I can move all the objects around. But if I move that pivot object, it's just going to change where it spawns. I've also got a custom nodes storage in here if anyone's curious about digging into the setup. So I hope you enjoy. And if you do pick this up, be sure to leave it a review on Blender Market or Gumroad, wherever you decide to grab it. And any feedback you have or any feature suggestions you'd like to add, feel free to comment in this video. If you do have your own asset libraries, I recommend creating a tools folder or even an array tools folder and you can add these new assets to the collection and if you've used this tool before and you'd still like to use the old tools feel free to use those as well i'll include both versions on my store pages thanks very much and enjoy